Good morning. Today we're going to look at the race to develop nuclear power, which will eventually mean fusion power. The networks picked up a story a few days ago that China is now far ahead of the United States and other Western countries in the nuclear power industry. Here is the one from Power Technology, and this is the headline from Reuters, and there were a few others. But the source for all of them is this comprehensive report here from the Information Technology and Innovation Foundation. It's really long and very in-depth, so we'll link to it and you can read it for yourself. Here's their cover page, and they explain how it all happened, that China went from basically zero in nuclear power just 20 years ago to today when they're 15 years ahead. Let's go through this, though, in a different way. How innovative is China in nuclear power? We can put any industry in there where I have bolded it red. This one is nuclear power, but it could be anything. Plastics, pharmaceuticals, chemicals, electronics, electric cars, bulldozers, passenger aircraft manufacturing, semiconductors. How innovative is China in semiconductors? Let's change the red words. In semiconductors, China built upon a foreign base of technology. It has become the world's leading proponent of semiconductors. Chinese semiconductor firms are well ahead of their Western peers, supported by the whole of China's government, extensive financing and systemic coordination. I know what you're gonna say, that it is not true in semiconductors, but it will be. In 10 years, probably fewer, we're gonna be reading a report exactly like this one about what China has done in semiconductors, because this is how they do it for everything in any industry. This is the playbook right here, and it works for them every time because they have lots of people, lots of very smart people, and lots and lots of money. So as we go through this report about nuclear power, understand that we're talking about your industry too, whatever that is. China has either already taken it over and is the world's industry leader today, or they're working on it. And this is how they're doing it in every industry. This MIT professor says China is now the world leader in nuclear technology, especially in the newest generation nuclear reactors. Considering their plants that are in operation or under construction, they are just behind the United States. And they have plans to have about 200 online by 2040. That's 150 planned plus the 50 that they already had. So that would be twice as many as anyone else. China needed to learn from others to catch up, and the China government puts its foot on the accelerator, giving money and buildings and setting up university departments and industrial parks. Eventually, these efforts bear fruit. Here in scholarly research, the Australian Strategic Policy Institute says that China is now a world leader in scientific research and nuclear energy. They are first in the H index, which measures the impact of scholarly research in 2023. And in the weighted shares of scientific publications, also from 2023, they are now ahead there too. The Chinese universities get involved all across China. Then come big investments in companies which apply the research commercially. 2023 numbers again, these are companies that reinvest in research and development, ranked by R&D intensity. Here are the top 10 R&D companies in the world in nuclear power generation, and Chinese companies are six out of the top 10. Then comes innovation in systems and organization, top down, national level planning and industrial integration, clustering, supply chains, logistics, Putting it all together, again, we can replace nuclear power with any industry we want. It's always the same. The Chinese government enacts policies to help their producers do the business more easily. Easy permits and regulations, the coordination of supply chains. Here's the MIT guy again. There is no secret here. The Chinese government gives a lot of funding, a lot of supply chain, and a lot of guarantees that this project is going to succeed. 
So here we are in 2024 and asking the question, how innovative is China's nuclear industry as of now? The common observation of China is that they do not innovate. They merely copy what others have done in the industry. And that is true until it stops becoming true. Once they catch up, the industrial innovation comes from China. It comes from the Chinese scientists who are writing the top research papers, and it comes from companies that are in the industry and they're investing money. Remember, this is how it goes in every single other industry too. China didn't have any tall buildings 30 years ago. If a Chinese kid wanted to build tall, modern buildings for a living, he needed to go to Tokyo or to New York. Today, he just needs to walk outside and talk to the people building the high-rise buildings on his block. Ask them for a job. Ask the Chinese companies that are building a thousand tall buildings a year, and they're doing things differently than a contractor in New York who's doing just one. The same process is going for the Chinese nuclear industry. They needed a lot of help early from Westinghouse and other Western companies. Now, they're the de facto world leader without peer in building and commercializing next generation technology. So these clips are examples from the report and get ready to see the word first a lot. Shi Dawan One power plant, the world's first fourth generation plant to become operational. The world's first multi-purpose SRM, which is a pressurized water reactor. 10 years of research and development. Design and construction are revolutionary and groundbreaking. The world's first molten salt and thorium reactor, which uses a different kind of fuel. China is also building fast neutron reactors to use still another kind of reactor fuel. There are six different classifications for Gen 4 reactors, and China is building all of them. The next important thing, and this also involves supply chain. China knows they're dependent on other countries for their fuel. In this case, Kazakhstan and Russia. Kazakhstan and Russia are friendly countries, and they share land borders with China. But it doesn't matter. China wants to be self-sufficient and is building out that part of the supply chain too. Again, this should sound familiar no matter what industry you're in. This is what they do. That's a strategic imperative for China to be self-sufficient at the raw materials and at the refining stages, no matter what they're making. Nuclear fusion is what everybody is after because the increase in power output would be quantum jumps above anything else. Eight tons of oil would equal one gram of fuel, which could be produced by the hydrogen in water. So fusion is a national priority for China, and the government is pouring money in, setting up education centers to pump out new plasma scientists. There is another very important key feature of China's development and industrial process that they do not mention in this report, but it is crucial too, which is that leading Chinese researchers and scientists who are abroad, they come back. Imagine you're a leading physicist in this case, doing the most advanced work in plasma physics and in theoretical physics. You may even be at MIT doing work there, and you read that this top professor down the hall is saying that China's a place to be now. You are a believer in nuclear power. It's clean. It's going to be so important in the future. Where is the best place to be living and working? They know that if they come to China, they'll never worry about money again or where the next round of funding is going to come from. They'll never worry about some U.S. or European or Japanese official telling them they're not allowed to publish in a journal or develop a technology for the market if it can be used to benefit a Chinese company. If that's happening now in semiconductor chips and electric car batteries, we know it's coming for nuclear fusion physics don't we? And they know it too. And just like a Chinese guy who moved overseas so he could build a lot of tall buildings, he looked around in 2000 or so and realized that the place to be was in China. So we should expect a good number of Chinese people coming back to build their nuclear reactors 
just like they did to build skyscrapers and fast trains and electric car batteries and semiconductors. Every industry, no matter what, China scrambles to catch up. Then the government gets heavily involved, setting up universities, getting regulations out of the way, providing financing. And they do. They do catch up. Then they become the leaders in innovation because there's nobody to copy from anymore. All the improvements come from here at that point. Then top Chinese scientists from around the world buy plane tickets. Every industry, no matter what. This is Wuhan, Hubei province. Be good. Thank you.